from now on, being smaller than a voodoo 2 is, uh, is something. Greetings, welcome to another Deckard Games YouTube PC modern thing, because today we are going to review the new uh, RTX 3050 from um, NVIDIA. Before that, this video is brought to you by Switch Technology Lisboa. If you want great prices and great customer care, if you want that uh, GPU that you can find, Switch Technology in Lisboa is the place to go. They care about computers, old and new, but they especially care about you, the final consumer. Please check the link in the description for more information. This one being the model from um, ASUS, apparently it is the Phoenix model kind of thing. It features 8GB of GDDR6, the new NVIDIA and peer architecture, some ray tracing and the LSS, but well, good luck with uh, some ray tracing in a um, entry-level card because this is what uh, this is, a uh, entry-level uh, GPU. So uh, sure, let's quickly take a look at the back. ASUS tells us we have some key features, second-gen ray tracing cores, sure, and tensor cores for some DLSS, PCIe Gen 4, DirectX 12 Ultimate, so uh, sure, we have some uh, ports, Specifications, well, uh, what do we have here? Display port and HDMI. Apparently, we have three display ports and one HDMI. We will check that in a moment. And uh, well, it features their uh, Axial Tech fan design, which is a fan that moves air around to, uh, well, cool the GPU, which uh, we already knew. So uh, let's uh, unbox this thing. Because that's what you do on YouTube. You unbox stuff. There we are. Ah, it, it opens like this. Lovely. Some protective uh, foam thingy. Ah, so small. Ah, man. In an age where uh, GPUs are getting bigger and bigger, do we have anything else? Or is it, it, it is just card? Yes, it is just cardboard. We have, as usual, I already recognize these, the speed setup from ASUS. I believe we have some cards in here. Yeah, the uh, Phoenix. I don't know if you can do anything with this card, but, uh, well, ASUS always sends these. Uh, three stars. Great. Warranty card. Thank you for giving us money. And again, the speed setup. And it's pretty much it. So uh, let us close this. Let's take a quick look at the card, which comes in a uh, protective uh, anti static bag, which doesn't want to open. There we are. Ah, so tiny. Well, there you go. It is true. We have uh, some uh, IO, three display ports, and one. HDMI, it is, uh, I don't know, two slots and one third thick, I believe. It is more than two slots. Again, single fan, the ASUS and the GeForce RTX logo in there. One 8-pin PCIe connector, not 6-pin. You need a full 8-pin. Yeah, it has a uh, pretty nice looking backplate which is cool. I enjoy the design on a simple card. I don't know, man. It is so small. Let me let me grab a, um, a Voodoo 2. Look at that. It is smaller than a, than a Voodoo 2. That's a thing here on the channel. From, uh, from today, from now on, being smaller than a Voodoo 2 is, uh, is something. But uh, sure, it is, uh, well, it is a GPU, as you can see, there is the uh, kind of big cooling solution with some heat pipes going on. I really enjoy when the fins on the heat pipe are horizontal to the card and not vertical. That way it is easier for uh, hot hair to come out from the um, shield over here instead of just blowing air 
to the motherboard so uh, sure so uh, yeah look at that so tiny i uh, i like it so let's put this to a test but first again youtube let's do uh, a peel Oh yeah, peel is done. So uh, yeah, let's put this into the test and see well if we can if we can play some modern games on it. So uh, hopefully we can. As usual, we are going to run a set of games, and for each game we are going to check three resolutions: 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. After the gaming benchmarks, there are also measurements for thermals and acoustics. Let's kick things off with Battlefield 5. We are going to run through the games. You can pause the video if you want to see it in more detail. This is a DirectX 12 game. At 1080p, the RTX 3050 gets an average of 96 frames per second and 79 1% lows. Scaling to 1440p in Battlefield 5, the RTX 3050 gets 73.7 frames per second on average and 62 1% lows and in this case finishing up ahead of the 6600 XT which has 70 frames per second on average very close but still falls behind. Scaling again to 4K this time we see a massive drop on the RTX 3050 to 40 frames per second on average. It is still playable but uh, again 40 frames per second on average and 1% lows falling also to 13. Next game on the list is Borderlands 3 and in this case at 1080p the RTX 3050 has uh, an average of uh, 57 frames per second and 47 1% lows falling well behind the 6600 XT but well this is an AMD title so it is kind of natural. Scaling to 1440p average frames per second drop to 40 and 1% lows to 34. Scaling again this time to 4K and this is a DirectX 12 game running at ultra settings. We go to slideshow land, the RTX 3050 gets 22 frames per second on average and 22 1% lows, but uh, yeah, it is not playable. The next game on the list is Control, another DirectX 12 game at ultra settings 1080p, the RTX 3050 gets an average of 61 frames per second with lows going all over the place. Scaling to 1440p, the RTX 3050 gets 38 frames per second on average and again 1% lows are all over the place. Scaling again this time to 4K, the RTX 3050 gets an average of 18 frames per second which is worse than slideshow territory. The next game is Cyberpunk 2077, another DirectX 12 game running at ultra preset with high settings and at 1080p the RTX 3050 gets an average of 44 frames per second and a minimum of 31% lows. Scaling Cyberpunk 2077 to 1440p, the RTX 3050 gets an average of 26 frames per second and 18 1% lows. In this case, very, very far from the 6600 XT. Scaling Cyberpunk 2077 to 4K, the RTX 3050 gets 14 frames per second on average and 8 1% lows, which makes this game absolutely unplayable. Next we have Doom Eternal running the Vulcan API Ultra Nightmare settings and at 1080p the RTX 3050 gets an average of 136 frames per second and 98 1% lows. On Doom Eternal at 1440p the RTX 3050 gets an average of 128 frames per second and 73 1% lows. Going to 4K on Doom Eternal, the RTX 3050 gets an average of 61 frames per second, right on that 60 frames barrier and 51 1% lows, making Doom Eternal playable on the RTX 3050, but well, 
Doom Eternal runs on pretty much everything, even on the display of your washing machine. Next we have GTA V, the only DirectX 11 game, running at max settings 1080p, the RTX 3050 gets an average of 146 frames per second and 63 1% lows. Scaling to 1440p, the RTX 3050 gets an average of 122 frames per second with 61% lows. Scaling again this time to 4K, the RTX 3050 gets 82 frames per second on average on GTA V with 41% lows. Next we have Horizon Zero Dawn, another DirectX 12 game, ultimate quality at 1080p. This is a new benchmark for me so I only have one test and in this case the RTX 3050 gets an average of 67 frames per second and 49 1% lows. Scaling to 1440p, Horizon Zero Dawn gets on the RTX 3050 54 frames per second on average with 43 1% lows. Going up again to 4K, we have an average of uh, 28 frames per second with 22 1% lows, again making this game not playable at uh, 4K. Finally we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, another DirectX 12 game, highest settings and at 1080p the RTX 3050 gets an average of 93 frames per second with 34 1% lows. Going up to 1440p the RTX 3050 drops the average to 63 frames per second which is still playable with 24 1% lows. And scaling up again to 4K the RTX 3050 gets an average of 33 frames per second with 13 1% lows making Shadow of the Tomb Raider unplayable. Here we have some numbers for the 3 Mark Time Spy demo, because well, it is a pure benchmark of uh, GPUs, and uh, on graphics test 1 and 2 at 1080p, you can see at the bottom, the RTX 3050 gets uh, 62 frames per second and uh, 52 frames per second. Going up to 1440p on those same two graphics tests, on the first, the RTX 3050 gets 40 frames per second on average and 34 on the second. Scaling again to 4K, the RTX 3050 gets on test 1 19 frames per second on average and 17 frames per second on average on graphics test 2. Next we have thermals, you can see that the GPU sets it at around 25 degrees Celsius at idle and while running the Time Spy demo on a loop, reaches a maximum of around 60 degrees Celsius, and well, it just stays there, and we are going to understand in a minute why it works like this. So uh, yeah, at idle, then you can see a maximum temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, and keep in mind that this is under heavy workload, so uh, it's not a real life uh, scenario, but uh, sure, there you go, 60 degrees Celsius, the maximum temperature, and uh, it just stays there. Next we have uh, noise or um, acoustics, and we understand why the um, delta difference in temperature is so high, because well, the uh, fan is spinning at a fixed RPM, as you can see, we have uh, around 40 decibels of uh, noise, at any given moment, you can see in the back that uh, Time Spy wasn't running and we already had 40 decibels of noise. And now, with Time Spy uh, running at the back, we have the exact same noise, the exact same acoustics, making this a um, quite loud GPU. Again, this is a um, single fan GPU, and uh, I don't know why ASUS went with this fixed RPM thing, I know the card needs cooling, but uh, well, it makes it a uh, quite loud GPU, I don't know if ASUS will fix this in the future or not, but uh, well, there you go, 40 decibels on average, either on uh, idle or under full load, which is weird, but uh, well, it is what it is. And so there you have it, it is time to edit this video and uh, share with you some um, Final thoughts on the RTX 3050, would I uh, recommend this card? 
Well, it is kind of tough to uh, talk about that because of today's pricing on GPUs. This is a $500 card and uh, more or less the same in, uh, in euros. And um, this is uh, NVIDIA's idea of a um, entry-level GPU. Hey, here, here it is, our entry-level for the RTX 3000 series. And it costs $500, so um, I don't know. I would say that um, in this particular case, I would not recommend this card because, uh, well, again, $500 with uh, 100 more, you can get a 6600 XT from uh, AMD, which uh, behaves a little bit better than this. And um, again, this is a um, single fan GPU. I don't know why ASUS really did this. This is the Phoenix version and you can get the exact same card, but instead of the Phoenix, the Phoenix, it is the um, Dual which has the exact same fan, but uh, two times the fans. It has one fan and another fan. And uh, I, I, without testing it, I truly believe that the Dual performs better than this, not in terms of gaming, but um, on that uh, binary of thermals and noise. I um, really believe that the Dual version of the same card will um, probably at the same temperature get some lower noise levels because uh, and again this is in a kind of fixed rpm so uh, which is kind of weird but again it is a single fan gpu so uh, it needs constant cooling so uh, sure make of that um, what you will and uh, i don't know man it is uh, from the front it is just a uh, black box with a fan on the side and on the back, I like it. But, well, these are aesthetics. Performance-wise, it handles 1080p uh, okay. Even some 40, 1440p games run uh, pretty well on this uh, GPU. 4K, obviously not. And, um, well, this is not a 4K GPU. And forget about ray tracing and stuff like that. Although you have the LSS to compensate for that, but... Um, Again, $500. This is NVIDIA's idea of a cheap GPU. I know that the 6500, well, it is slower than this, but uh, it's a $300, $330 GPU. I consider that a uh, decent entry-level pricing. I'm not talking about performance. I'm talking about pricing. If this had a more moderate price, uh, because, uh, well market uh, i would definitely recommend it but uh, at 500 dollars i don't know man again for a few bucks more you can get a 6600 or a 6600 xt which is better than this but um sure you don't expect prices to go down not only we are still in a, a pandemic period but um and sh shortage of materials and stuff like that but, uh, well, there's a war imminent in uh, Russia and stuff like that. Uh, cold war between the um, EU and US and uh, Russia. So, no, prices uh, probably will not go down uh, as soon as we would like. But, uh, yeah, I'm rambling about stuff that uh, doesn't belong in this video. So, uh, will you stay in there? Yes, don't fall. So if you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up, because uh, your thumbs up are um, cool. I give my thumbs up to yours. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, because your support is always and very much appreciated. Remember that you can follow me on social media, because social media is a, is a thing, and I share stuff in there. As always, thank you very much for watching this video review GPU thing. And until my next one, please do take care.